Hi Yogi and welcome to another slow flow practice with me Oshana. In today's class we will be taking a beginner's mindset to our balancing postures which means of course that this class is beginner friendly but it also means that if you have a more advanced practice or you for instance have had to take a break from your practice because of injury or because you've created a new human life then this is a great place to come back to when you're rebuilding your practice or really trying to get a deeper understanding of those foundational postures that sort of influence all of the more advanced yoga practice. Um, the entire class is really a request that I had from one of my long-term students, Angie. So Angie, of course, this is for you. Um, and the class has really inspired me to not only um, get going on creating a beginner friendly series for you all, but I've also decided to create several different series that will allow you to start at the foundations and gradually progress through them into much more advanced postures. So I hope you'll enjoy this journey into the balancing postures first. Um, as Angie requested, this is a routine that you can always come back to if balance is a tricky thing for you and it's something you're working on. I think balancing is one of the big, big benefits of yoga practice because it's really something that comes in useful in our day-to-day -day life. Um, but also carries through into a myriad of other disciplines and sports. So I think you'll see great benefit if you repeat this class a bunch of different times, maybe even on a weekly basis, who knows? The only thing you may need, it's optional to use two yoga bricks in our Warrior Threes. And of course, if you do not have any yoga bricks, then please feel free to substitute with a sort of thicker hardback book that you can put a little bit of body weight on. Um, and if you're using props, please gather them, place them at the front of your mat and we'll be starting in a tabletop position. So let's meet on the mat, Yogi. So in your tabletop position, make sure that your shoulders are stacked on top of your wrists and your knees are directly under your hips. Have a sense that you're really grounding down through the knuckle that's at the base of your index finger as well as all 10 fingertips. Press the tops of your feet into the mat so there's a gentle tucking under of your tailbone and a firming up of the lower belly into the spine. Let the crown of the head grow longer. And maybe for a moment, close the eyes completely so that you can really scan through the body. Equally distribute the weight across all of your knees and hands. And really memorize what that feels like for the body to be so grounded and stable. And from here, we'll take this into a little bit of asymmetrical balancing play. So we'll slowly shift our weight into the right knee. We'll tuck the left toes under and reach the left heel back. And don't just allow yourself to dump all of your weight into the right hip. Really squeeze the right outer hip in towards the center of the mat. Then float the leg off the floor, press the heel back, spin your left pinky toe to the ground. When you're ready, make your right hand light possibly even lift it towards the front of your mat and really extend through the fingertips as well as the heel of your foot. For a moment, embrace that sort of gentle calibration of the muscles and the sort of connection of your left hand to the right knee as they communicate to hold you there. And we'll stay for another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, plant the right hand back to the floor. Bring your left big toe down and then spin the heel to the ground. Lift your left arm all the way up towards the ceiling into a gentle side plank on the first side. Now optional here to stay, this is a slightly trickier variation, or you could bring your right foot behind the right knee and tuck the toes under, which gives you a little bit more of a, a sort of stable base from here, we'll inhale and reach the top arm all the way to the front. As you exhale, sweep the hand down and reach back and inhale to come up and over. Just limbering into that top shoulder joint and sort of really trying to match the movement to the breath. Making this your final round. 
With the inhale, sweep the arm up and overhead. Find your way back to tabletop. Rearrange if you need to. And we'll do all of that on the second side. So we'll shift our weight into the right knee. We'll tuck the, the sorry, the left knee and we'll tuck the right toes under. Again, making sure that we haven't simply collapsed into that left hip. So we're still squeezing the left hip into the center line, then floating the right foot, pressing the heel away and squaring the hip towards the floor by really pressing the right pinky toes, spinning it down to the ground. If you're feeling fairly balanced, you could make your left fingertips light or lift your left fingers all the way forward in the opposite direction to the leg. And again, we embrace the wobbles. We embrace that sort of sense that the right arm is communicating and keeping us there, working with the left knee. And we stay and lengthen for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Plant your left hand down, bring the right toe to the floor and spin the right heel down. As you inhale, lift the right arm all the way up towards the ceiling. Either stay in this variation here or tuck your, your left toes behind the left knee so that you have a little bit more of a sense of grounding here and lift the chest up towards the ceiling. We'll change the movement with the breath here slightly. So as you inhale, take the arm forward with the exhale, sweep the hand all the way to the back of the mat. And again, inhale to come all the way up and over. Just a couple more times, moving with the breath, really sort of tapping into what's going on in your shoulder joint today. I'm making this your final round here. When the arm comes all the way back over, plant the hand down, make your way back into tabletop. This time, tuck the toes under, have a soft kind of uh, unlocking sensation in your elbows. And then from here, hover the knees just about an inch off the floor. And we stay here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Take your sitting bones up and back into downward facing dog. And in that first downward dog, feel free to play a little bit with any kind of movement. You can bend the knees one at a time, press the opposite heel back. You could have a little shimmy of the hips left and right. Just anything that really feels good and allows you to ease into the pose slightly at the beginning of practice. And gently from here, bend the knees deeply so that you can walk the feet to the front of the mat. Lengthen the spine halfway, bring your hands to the shins and roll the shoulders back. Crown of the head is long. As you exhale, keep the length in the spine and fold back into the legs. Soft knees as you inhale, lift the arms all the way up and overhead. Lift the gaze if you wish. And exhale to release the hands down by the sides of the hips. From here, we'll sort of, again, start by really setting the foundation of our body. So spin the palms open to the front of the mat. Make sure that your feet are hip distance here. And if the balance, if balance is a fairly easy thing for you, you can close the eyes completely. Otherwise, if it's tricky, you might keep the eyes open and focus towards a point that's in front of you, keeping the gaze a little bit soft. And we'll start to shift the weight from through different parts of the feet. So gently allow the weight to come forward into the ball of your left foot. Make sure that you're not gripping too much with your toes. And then take the weight of your body across into the ball of your right foot. Go across into the heel of your left foot, making sure not to let your toes lift too high up. And go across into the heel of the right foot coming forward into the ball of the right foot, to the heel of the left foot, heel of the right foot, ball of the left foot, heel of the left foot, ball of the left foot, ball of the right foot, heel of the left foot, ball of the left foot, 
heel of the right foot, ball of the right foot. And see for a moment if you can take a few circles in one direction. So don't just hula hoop your hips in the circular motion, but really allow your body, your entire body to sway around those four points and gently change the direction. So go in the opposite way. Again, just a couple of circles here and eventually find some stillness in the center of all of those points where you feel like you're not falling forward, you're not tilting too far back and there's equal amounts of weight across both of your feet. And from that sense of grounding and stability in the base of your body, have a sense that the crown of your head is lengthening up and there's more space in the body and then gently, if the eyes are closed, blink them open. From here, we're going to shift the weight into the right leg so that we can come either onto the ball of your left foot with the hands on the hips, or you might draw the entire left knee into the hip. It doesn't have to come very high. It can just be at hip height here. And flex the foot towards the shin. And for a moment, just allow that balance to happen, the act of your calf and ankle sort of gradually over time needing to do a little bit more work. So embrace all of that struggle as we move through the practice. This is what's going to lead us to better balance. And from here, bend your standing leg quite deeply. Send the outer edge of your left foot to the outside of your of the right side of your mat. That was a bit convoluted. Uh, lift the left arm all the way up and overhead as you inhale. Come into a gentle side bend to the right. Still pressing through the outer edge of your left foot, really reaching through the fingertips, lengthening the entire left side of the body. As you inhale, bring the left hand back to the hip. Retract your left knee into the chest. And from here, bend your standing leg again so that your feet meet hip distance apart. You can let your sitting bones be heavy towards the back of the mat. Let your fingertips reach up again into chair pose, Utkatasana. Sink the hips a little bit lower as you exhale. Take another inhale here and with the next exhale, sweep the hands down to fold back into the legs. As you inhale, lengthen the spine halfway. Now options here. If you'd like, you can have your fingertips on the floor, like little teepee tents under the shoulders. If you have two bricks, then place them on the highest setting under your shoulder blades. Lengthen the crown of the head forward and shift your weight into the right foot so that you can flex the left toes up towards your face. And see if you can retract the entire left leg into the hip joint so that you allow the foot to float off the mat. And you can bend the right knee as much as you need to to do that. From here, gently press your left heel back, keeping the left toes, pinky toes spinning towards the floor. Almost have a sense that the center of your chest is arching towards the ground. So you're coming into Warrior 3, Virabhadrasana 3. The back of the neck is long and the shoulders are soft. And again, here we stay for a couple of rounds of breath so that we can really allow the standing leg to slowly get used to bearing this body weight, making the adjustments it needs to. And then very, very gently we land the ball of the left foot behind us. We can shimmy the right foot a little bit to the outer edge of the mat, which helps with balance. And you can remove the bricks here and slowly Straighten the front leg, reach the arms up as you inhale. As you exhale, bend the elbows, bend the front knee, coming into cactus arms, high lunge. Lift the chest towards your chin. As you inhale, lift everything up, straighten the legs. As you exhale, come a little bit deeper into that lunge and do that one last final time. Inhale to lift up and lengthen. Exhale into your high lunge. See if you can rotate your elbows forward, really pinch the shoulder blade together at the back, lift the chest towards the chin, and then swim your way all the way to the floor. Bring your shoulders on top of your wrists and slowly step your front foot to the back into a high plank. 
from here, right forearm down, left forearm down into low plank. You might shimmy your feet slightly back so that your hips and shoulders are in one line. Bring the shoulders on top of your elbows. And slowly from here, really engage the front of your body and we stay for another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Release the hips all the way to the floor. And we'll come into quite an active sphinx pose. So we'll press the tops of the feet into the floor. We'll have the elbows just about an inch in front of the shoulder line. And you're going to press the forearms down and away from, from the shoulders. Really grip the fingertips into the mat. And then as if you're trying to pull the fingers all the way back towards your big toes. Really have a sense that your spine is arching and lengthening forward. The muscles in the back of the body are engaging to lift and lengthen the spine a little bit more with each exhale. And we stay for our last few rounds of breath in this very, very active variation. Finally, when you're ready, as you exhale, plant the hands under your shoulders and send your sitting bones all the way back into a child's pose for a little bit of a counter stretch here. Press into the balls of your hands to send the sitting bones back into the heels. Take a few rounds of breath here. Gently, when you're ready, we'll shift our weight into the hands, tuck the toes under, lift the sitting bones up and back into downward facing dog. Not here for long. We walk the feet forward towards the hands. Feet hip distance when you get there. Inhale to lengthen the spine halfway, hands on the shins, roll the shoulders back. Soften the knees as you exhale to fold all the way back in. Gentle bend in the knees as you inhale, come all the way up to standing, lift the arms up and overhead. Exhale to release the hands down by your side. We'll prepare for the second side. So again, we find the grounding through the four corners of our feet. Then we'll shift the weight into our left leg without letting the left hip splay out to the side. So we're keeping that contracted into the center. And you can either come onto the right big toe or with the hands on your hips, you could lift the knee into the chest and flex the toes, pardon me, towards your shin. And from here, again, we'll stay for a little while. We'll allow the standing leg to really do that calibration it needs to do. And also to feel a little bit the exhaustion of being here for longer periods of time. That's how we build the strength that we need, right? So we'll bend the standing leg. And finally, we get to move out of this. We'll press the outer edge of the right foot just past the left edge of the mat. Right arm reaches up and overhead as you inhale into that side bend. Exhale to come a little bit deeper and stay for another few rounds of breath. Really lengthen the right side of the waist. Spin the pinky finger edge down of that top hand. And don't forget to breathe, hopefully. Gently reach your top hand all the way up and overhead. Bring it back to the hip. On an inhale, retract the right knee into the chest. As you exhale, bend the standing leg deeply, bring your feet to meet into chair pose, feet hip distance, draw the sitting bones down and back, then lift the arms as you inhale. Allow your body to settle back into symmetry. As you exhale, swan dive back into the legs. Inhale to lift the spine. Again, yogi's choice. You can either have your fingertips tented under your shoulders or you may wish to have those bricks again on the highest setting to allow you to lengthen the spine forward. The crown of the head is long and we shift our weight into the left foot so that we can flex the right toes towards the face. Maybe we're able to retract the entire right leg so we float it off the floor. And then gently we start to press the foot back towards the back of the mat. Right pinky toes towards the floor. The hands are becoming ever lighter and we we'll stay a little bit longer, seeing if we can contract the outside of our left hip into the center line of the mat. Keeping the spine nice and long so the center of the chest is aiming towards the floor. 
and gently bend the standing leg so that you can land the ball of your right foot behind you. You can remove the bricks here. And on an inhale, straighten the front leg, reach your arms all the way up and overhead. You can adjust the outer edge of your left foot a little bit more to the outs um, towards the side of your mat if that helps with stability. As you exhale, bend the elbows into cactus arms, bend the front knee. Inhale to lengthen up. Exhale, come back into the pose. Pinch the shoulder blades together. And final time here, reach as tall as you can. Exhale to come back into it. And again here, see if you can lift your elbows up towards the ceiling. Really draw the shoulder blades together and lift the chest. Exhale to fold back into your front leg. Plant the hands down, bring your shoulders on top of the wrists and step the front foot to the back into a high plank. Gently from here, left forearm down, right forearm down into a low plank. And we'll play a little bit with our stability here. So see if you can shift your weight into the right foot and point your left toes back. Float the foot off the mat for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your left foot back to the mat. Float the right toes back for five, four, three, two, and one. Release the foot, release the hips all the way down. From here, bring your right forearm parallel to the front of the mat. Tent the left fingers under your left shoulder. As you exhale, press into your left fingertips to take a gaze over to the left foot. Inhale to come back, face the front of the mat. Exhale to twist to the back. And we'll do that one final time. Inhale to face the front of the mat. Exhale to twist. We'll do that on the second side. So we'll bring the left forearm parallel to the front of the mat. Right fingertips under the right shoulder. Take an inhale as you face forward. On the exhale, press into the right hand. Take a little gaze over to the right pinky toe. Inhale to face the front. Exhale to press up and take a little gaze back. And one final time into that little sphinx twist. Exhale to come up. And inhale, face back to the front. Plant your hands under your shoulders and exhale to press all the way back into a child's pose. Sitting bones to the heels, knees nice and wide. And gently pressing into the hands, tuck the toes under, lift the sitting bones up and back to downward facing dog. Gently bend the knees to walk or step the feet forward. Feet hip distance when you get there. Lengthen the spine halfway as you inhale. Roll the shoulders back. Exhale, fold back into your legs. Soft knees to reverse swan dive as you inhale. Lift the arms, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands down by your side. Now I'll come to face you as I think that will be slightly easier for you to see. And we'll be doing tree pose vrikshasana. So we'll shift all of our weight into the right leg again. And again, making sure that we're not simply allowing the right hip to sort of splay out to the side, but we're sort of really contracting the glute medius, which is on the outside of the hip to keep us in the center. From here, you could have the heel of your left foot to the inside of the ankle. You can have the hands on the hips, option two. If you're feeling quite nifty with the balance today, you could bring the heel of the foot to the inside of the calf. Or if it's super easy and you're very flexible and mobile, you could bring the heel of the foot to the inside of your thigh here. And see if you can find your focal point first. You could either keep the hands on the hips, which is slightly easier, or you could start to lift your fingertips up towards the ceiling, like you're growing the branches of a tree. Maybe your index and thumb can come to touch, so you get a little bit of engagement in the hands. And then you soften the gaze, you give yourself a little smile because you know your facial muscles realistically don't need to get involved in balancing. And if you want to take this a little bit further, then you can bring your left hand to the left thigh and reach the right arm all the way up and overhead. 
into a little side bend. If you lose your balance, like your yoga teacher, then you can always rejoin at any point. With the inhale, bring the hands back up towards the ceiling, palms touch through the center line. Draw the left knee to face forward. And again, hold there for a moment in your Hasta Parangustasana, challenge your strength a little bit more, and then bend the standing leg so that your feet come again, hip distance into chair pose. Let the sitting bones be heavy towards the back. And we'll challenge ourselves a little bit more here. Why not, right? We'll reach the arms up and we'll see if we can reach the heels up too. And from here, we stay for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, lift your heels a little bit higher if you can, for five, four, three, two, and one. Fold all the way into your legs and release the heels as you exhale. From here, lengthen the spine. Again, yogi's choice. Tent the fingertips under the shoulders, or maybe you've got those bricks handy again on the highest setting. We'll shift the weight into the right foot and flex the left toes towards our face. When we're ready, we're going to float the foot off the ground by retracting the foot into the hip joint and then press the left heel back into warrior three, Virabhadrasana three. Again, center of your chest is aiming towards the floor. The crown of the head is growing taller and your left pinky toe is spinning towards the floor. So you're closing that top hip off and if you wish, you could start to play with making your hands light, maybe lifting one at a time to the sides of the hips. Seeing if you can straighten the front, the standing leg and allow any kind of wobbling or if you fall out, just embrace it. Allow it to be part of the practice. And very gently when you're ready, land your the ball of your left foot behind you. Come into a high lunge as you inhale. Lift the arms. Again, if you need to, you can shimmy the front foot a little bit to the outer edge of the mat. Helps you square the hips and feel more balanced and steady here. As you exhale, left hand comes to the back thigh and you reverse the high lunge, reaching the right arm back. As you inhale, right hand to the right hip, left arm sweeps up and overhead reaching towards the right side, really press the heel back. As you exhale, the hands come forward. You can plant them on the floor and gently bringing your shoulders on top of the wrist, you step your front foot to the back into high plank. Right forearm down, left forearm down into your low plank. Press the heels back, bring your shoulders on top of your elbows, and then bring your right forearm parallel to the front of the mat. Let both heels drop over to the right. Left hand lifts into a side plank on the first side. Now option one to stay here, or you could stack your feet on top of each other, which is a little bit more tricky. Press the floor away, lift through your bottom hip, lengthen up for your last couple of breaths here. Staying for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Release your hips down. Keep your hands as they are. So you're in a little bit of a side bend here, lengthening through the lower side of your ribs. And keep the, your left hand in front of you. Had to think about that one. Flex your toes towards your face. I'm gonna take this into a little bit of a strengthening exercise. So here, as you inhale, lift the leg all the way up as high as you can. Point the toes as you exhale to lower down. Flex the toes, inhale to lift. Exhale to point and lower. One last time here with movement. As you lift the leg this time, either stay here and you can really be working on your strength. Otherwise, if you want to take this into a little bit of a stretch, you bend the knee, see if you can catch the big toe with your index, middle finger and thumb, and then extend the foot away from you, really pressing through the ball of the foot. Again, optional to stay. If you want to go a little bit further, you wrap your top arm around that top calf and see if you can draw the leg a little bit closer also incidentally takes you a little bit deeper into the side stretch. Whichever option you're in, we'll slowly make our way all the way back 
where we started from and shimmy our way onto the front of our belly. The hands go underneath the shoulders as you exhale, press your way all the way back into a child's pose with the knees separated wide. For a moment, gather the breath, let your heart rate slow down. And gently pressing into the palms of your hands, start to lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Walk the feet forward, lengthen the spine when you get there, lift halfway, inhale. Exhale to fold back into the legs. Soft knees as you inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to standing, lift the gaze. And exhale the hands down by your side. Coming into our final sort of hard bit of work, I would say. So we'll shift our weight into the right, uh, left leg. And again, making sure that this left hip isn't just sort of splaying out to the side. We're going to contract the outer hip here. We'll have the right ankle or the right heel towards the right, left ankle if you wish. You can have the hands on top of the hips. And option one is simply to stay here. There's already a little bit of balancing work going on. You could, if you wish, lift your heel to the calf. And very much optional if you're feeling very bendy as well, you could bring the heel all the way into the inner thigh, just as long as the foot is not touching your knee or putting any pressure on the knee here. Now again, you can stay. You can keep your center of gravity a little bit lower, which is slightly easier for balance, or you grow the branches of the tree upwards. You find your focal point, maybe index and thumb touch again. And maybe you have to remind yourself to soften your gaze and give yourself a little smile again. If you took that side bend on the first side, you might do that again here. So you release your right hand to the right thigh. You lift the left arm up and overhead into that side bend to the right. And stay for your final couple of breaths. As you inhale, you come back to center. Find your balance there. <laughs> Embrace the wobbles. Bring the palms to touch as you let them descend through the center line. Exhale the hands to the hips. Bring your right knee all the way into center. Then bend the standing leg so your feet can meet in chair pose, Utkatasana. Let the sitting bones be heavy. Reach your fingertips up. Again, extra challenge. You can shift your weight forward into the balls of your feet. Lift the heels nice and high. Slightly different here. We're going to go for three sit-ups if we can. We lower down very slowly, maybe your sitting bones come all the way to the heels, but you lift the heels a little bit higher and speedily we come halfway up again and then gently as you exhale, lower down. Feel the burning in the thighs, embrace it anyway, come up halfway and final time, we lower down if we can, nice and slow and speedily we come halfway and exhale to fold all the way back into the legs, release the heels. Yogi's choice. Hands underneath your shoulders for the final time or hands on top of the bricks in the high setting. Lengthen the crown of the head first, then shift your weight into the left foot. Flex the right toes towards your face. Maybe float the entire right foot off the mat and press the heel away from you with the right pinky toe spinning towards the floor. If you're feeling fairly comfortable in your balance today, one hand at a time can come to the sides of your hips. You can start to really lengthen through the crown of the head. And of course, if you want to take it a little bit further, you reach the arms forward. And also if you have space, unlike me. And again, our final few breaths, seeing if you can extend the bottom leg Really allow the center of your chest to slightly lift and lengthen forward. And then a slow, slow descent. You bring the right ball of the right foot behind you, coming into a high lunge. You can walk the left foot a little bit to the outer edge of the mat for stability. Hands can be on the hips. Let your breath settle. 
right hand to the back thigh, lift the left arm all the way up and over, reach through the fingertips, gently bring that left hand to the left hip, sweep the right arm all the way up and overhead into a side bend to the second side, lengthen the heel back so that you really get deep into that sort of tissue along the right side of the body. As you exhale, the top hand comes down. We can frame the front foot. Make sure that your shoulders are on top of your wrists and exhale to step your front foot back into high plank. Left forearm down, right forearm down. Press the floor away into your low plank. And we come into the second side of side plank here. So bring your left forearm parallel. Let your heels drop over to the left side of the mat. Optional to stack your feet on top of each other right arm reaches up, press the floor away from you, lift through your lower hip, stay for your last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1 and slowly let your hips come all the way down, you can have the right hand in front of you, flex the toes towards your face and press the floor away. Gently as you inhale, the right leg lifts up. Point the toes as you exhale to lower down. Flex the toes to inhale and lift. Point the toes to exhale and lower. One final time with movement in your own time. Then lift the leg again with the foot flex. You could either hover the leg here or bend the knee. Catch the big toe with your index, middle finger and thumb and kick the heel and the ball of the foot towards the ceiling. Again, option one to stay here or if you wish, you can wrap your top arm around the calf and see if you can bring the leg a little bit closer towards your torso, pointing the toes away from you. Still pressing the floor away so you're getting some length and into the left side waist. And gently release the foot wherever you are. Come all the way back onto the front of the body. For a moment, rest your head in the centre, one hand on top of the other. Allow the forehead to rest on top of the hands. And we'll come into a gentle hip opener here. So we'll have the left knee coming out to the side, right at hip height. So you don't want to squeeze the knee in too tight. You want it exactly at the height of your hip and then press the knee away from you so that your leg is at about a 90 degree angle with the knee as well and the ankle. Let's have the uh, left hand on top of the right. Option one is to have your eyes and gaze looking in the same direction as your knee, so towards the left side of the mat. If you want to take a little bit of a stretch into the neck, you turn the head in the opposite direction, so the left cheek is on top of the left hand. And we stay here for a few rounds of breath, really allowing the body to settle into the mat, allowing gravity to do some of the work for us, so over time, our left hip merges a little bit more with the mat and we find the space and softness to let the hip descend. It's really a half mandukasana, half frog pose. Very deep hip opener. And very gently, we're going to bring the head back into the centre first and then extend the left leg back. We'll change sides, so we'll have the right hand on top of the left here and we'll bring the right knee to hip height. And again, we'll create that 90 degree line with the ankle as well. And you're really trying to aim the knee away from you so that you start to flatten the right hip towards the floor. Again, options for the head are to rest your left cheek on the right hand, which would mean you're facing in the same direction as your knee, 
and if you wanted a little bit more of a stretch in the neck you're going to turn the other way so that you're facing towards the left side of the mat away from the leg yogi's choice and again just allowing a few rounds of exhalations to sort of soften you with each exhale letting go of a little bit more tension and allowing gravity to weigh you down and then gently coming back into center lift the head first then release your right leg back and from here for a moment stack your fists on top of each other rest the forehead on top of the fists And if you can, close the eyes completely, really feel the weight of your, of your, or the, rather the pressure of your hands into the forehead, maybe allowing you to release the muscles across the forehead a little bit. Maybe you're able to soften your lower jaw away from the top jaw, release the tongue from the top palate of the mouth. Allow the muscles around the face to soften, muscles around the neck. Over these last few moments of your practice, maybe notice where the breath starts in the front of the body. So use your mat as a way of getting feedback about your breathing. So where does the inhale start? Which is the first part of your front body that is in contact with the mat where there's pressure? And where does the exhale start, which is the first part of the front body that softens back into the mat as you breathe out. And stay with that line of inquiry just for a couple of rounds of breath. Maybe you switch the fist that's on top. And gently, when you're ready, lift the head, plant the hands underneath your shoulders and press your way all the way back into a child's pose. Take the knees wide, big toes touch. Let the forehead rest. Gently, when you're ready, round through the spine to come all the way up to kneeling and gently let your feet come out from underneath your sitting bones you can find any comfortable seated position here so maybe the shins are crossed maybe one ankle uh, is one heel is in front of the other any options a good option here and from here we'll bring the palms to touch in front of the chest we'll bow the forehead towards the fingertips and we'll use this final moment of practice to really feel a deep deep sense of gratitude for the fact that we managed to show up on our mat to practice today. Maybe we've been doing that consistently for a longer period of time. That is something to certainly cherish. Feeling a deep sense of gratitude for our physical body that allows us to move the way it does. The good and the bad. We accept it all and we are grateful for all of it because all of it is a lesson that is held within. And we have a deep sense of gratitude for this communi community of yogis that sort of brings us back to our mat and allows us to explore our practice in different ways, whether we're teachers or still students. We bow to the entirety of our yoga practice, not just ourselves, but really that whole universe, the deep ancient roots of yoga, we are thankful for them. 
often keeping us sane in a world of crazy. The light in me recognizes the light in you. Namaste, yogis. So thank you so much for joining me in today's practice. I hope you enjoyed the class. Of course, if you would, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, etc., please leave it in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. And of course, if you'd like to find us anywhere else online, then all of that information will be left in the description to the video. And I hope to see you back here next week uh, for another slow flow practice with me. Thank you so much for joining me, Yogi. Bye.